The News Radio Wham 1180. Next news at 1230. Breaking news when it happens anytime. The Rush Limbaugh Show starts now on News Radio Wham 1180. <laughs> my children and my wife I thank my lucky stars to be living here today cause the flag still stands for freedom and they can't take that away and I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free and I won't forget the man thrill seekers and conversationalists all across the fruited plain welcome to the rush limbaugh program mr president it is a distinct honor and privilege to have you with us and i want you to do something for me sir go ahead i want you to imagine you have just landed in a gleaming majestic air force one to the largest radio rally in history instead of thousands cheering as you walk up to the stage there are millions and millions of patriots out there right now anxiously awaiting to hear from you. No doubt they're waving Trump flags, wearing their bright red MAGA hats proudly. This, sir, is a mega MAGA rally, and we are all thrilled to be with you today. We are so glad you're doing better, and welcome to the EIB Network. Well, I want to thank you, Rush. You're a fantastic man, a friend of mine, but uh, before I really even knew you as a friend, you were like a supporter. And I said, I know that guy, he's got a big audience, but... Uh, I never even knew the importance of what you do and what you say, and now I do very well. And it keeps us all in the game. And uh, we just got great polls out of, uh, you probably heard, out of Arizona. We're getting them out of Nevada. You know, the real polls, not the fake polls. We're getting them out of North Carolina, looking really good. I think Pennsylvania's looking good. Florida's looking great. It's all a big phony deal they have going, Rush, and uh, we're going to win this. I think it's going to be a bigger win than we had four years ago. Oh, that would be great. I, and, I have, uh, uh, Mr. President, great polls. I, I have to tell you, from from the moment that your appearance was announced, we have we've received. Uh, we've never had a response like this, sir. And I, I'm wow. in my 32nd year. We have never had a response like we had thousands and thousands of questions and comments for you. You are. I hope you know how deeply loved you are by so many Americans who have invested their hopes and prayers for this country in you. They want to see you in, in the White House for for four more years. And I'll tell you what I want. I want them to get to know you as I do. I want to get I want I want them to know the Donald Trump that I know. Uh, you are one of the strongest, the most unwavering the most determined, loyal people I've ever met. But you care deeply about the country. You care about everybody. And it's, 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 a, it's uh, just a breathtaking thing. The difference in you as portrayed in the media and who you really are is breathtaking. And today, I want people to get to know the Donald Trump that I know. Well, I appreciate it. And, you know, when you suggested this, I immediately jumped on it because your audience is is the biggest. I mean, it's just incredible. And we have some great friends in Sean Hannity and so many others. And 
you know, Mark and so many, so many people are so great to us. But but we have so many people that are so untruthful. And the biggest thing and the one thing I haven't figured out is why. If we say we're going to create a strong military and protect, we're going to create a, a strong economy like we've never had an economy prior to the plague. And now we're building it up again stronger than before. Watch, it's going to be stronger than before. We're almost at record stock market. Nobody can believe that. In the We're rounding the turn on the pandemic, and I'll have something to say about that because I'm telling you, we have a cure, more than just a therapeutic. We have a cure. But so many things that we've done, and, you know, no matter what you do, they, they, are, they try and find fault, and not only fault, vicious. They're vicious people. And you say, why wouldn't they want to have good education, a good military, a strong economy, uh, safety, security? Why would they want to live like they live in Portland and where they just allow these uh, agitators and, and anarchists to run the streets? Why would they want that? That's the only thing I haven't figured out. Why would they? And why would these big companies like Comcast, uh, I call it Comcast, it's Comcast, but I call it Comcast because it's a con job. That's NBC mostly. But if you look at that or CNN, which is so pathetic, why would they do that? Why would they, why would they want to have a country that's uh, in turmoil? Because they create it. The fake news is, is the worst thing we have going. You know, the lamestream, I call it the lamestream media. But you'd think that they'd want to see great education, great country, great security, strong They military. don't want to see you responsible for it. They don't. It's a crazy thing, Rush. It's well, the one thing I've, I've never quite figured it out, you know. And they become less wealthy. You know, to a large extent, they become less wealthy. And they're willing to give up their wealth in order to see the country go to hell. I don't. Th someday when you figure that out, you're going to let me know. Okay. That's I'll tell you. I'll tell I you today. Do. I know exactly go what ahead. this is. But before go we, you know, we've, we've got a lot of questions for you from um, from members of the audience. And before we okay. dive into those, you know, I need to ask you something that I've not, I've not really had a chance to ask you prior. Before you did this, before 2015, when you came down the escalator and announced right. your candidate, you, you had... You had a storybook life. You had an right. absolutely fabulous life. You had a life that anybody would aspire to. You were very successful. You were happy. You were a, a media darling. They loved you back then. Why did you decide to run for president and put up with the day in and day out maligning that you get? Because you did not have to do this. I'll tell you, it's such a great question. And I do it again, even though it's far worse. I never thought I'd be involved with a Russia hoax or a uh, Ukraine hoax or be impeached because I made a phone call congratulating somebody that I never met to or, you know, or spoke to on becoming the president of Ukraine. And all of a sudden you get impeached. And it was a perfect phone call. You know, a, a letter that we actually, fortunately, we had to transcribe because they made up the phone call. They said it was totally different. Fortunately, or maybe I wouldn't be talking to you right now in this capacity, at least. Fortunately, we had it transcribed. It was transcribed, the exact call. If we didn't, they would have, uh, you know, they, you know what Schiff said. He said it before Congress. He repeated my call. It had no bearing on what I said. It was a perfect phone call, and I got impeached over it. I never knew it would be so unpleasant, but nobody has done more in the last three and a half years as president in the first three and a half years that I have. Nobody. I mean, if you look at rebuilding the military and the economy and the best employment numbers we've ever had. And we've cut regulations to a point that's so incredible nobody's ever seen. If you look at the veterans choice in the VA accountability, you know, we had people in the VA that would beat up our veterans and beat them up badly. You know, they're, they're, they're uh, infirm. They're not well, they're not feeling well. And that you had these animals in there that would beat them up. We couldn't do anything about them now. With accountability, you have to account, and we fire them, and worse, we get rid of them. And our vets are, have a 91 percent approval rating, the highest we've ever had in the VA. You don't hear those bad stories about the VA anymore like you used to. And now they get immediate doctor attention if they have to wait online. I mean, but, but that's so many, so many different things. Uh, right to try, where they can try medicines. And, I mean, I can sort of give you an example of that with the COVID, because I was I was in not great shape, and we have a medicine that that healed me, that fixed me. It's a great medicine, and had I not gotten it, Rush, uh, it would have been in line for another year probably before they brought it out. Great company, two great companies actually make it, to you know make very similar things, but they they both work equally well. Uh, and we're going to send it. We're already sending it. It's starting the process is. Hundreds of thousands of vials are being sent to the hospitals all over the country. People are going to get immediately better, like I did. 
I mean, I feel better now than I did two weeks ago. It's crazy. And I recovered immediately, almost immediately. I might not have recovered at all from COVID. Uh, it's a, to me, it's the biggest story. But the press doesn't even want to report that. You know, they talk about the vaccines and the vaccines are very important, Drush. But this is more important because we can go into hospitals and clean out the hospitals, literally, with people that the vaccines are very important. It's a, a different stage. Well, yeah, this is the antibodies that you've well, this uh, is the, this speeding is the up. Antibody. This is the antibody and uh, Regeneron. It's it's the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen. And I'm, I had a meeting with doctors today. You know, it's always the good thing about when you're president, 11 doctors show up and they're all the head of Johns Hopkins and this and that. They're great people. But Walter Reed is an incredible place. And, and these 11 guys came in today. They, they showed me stats. It's amazing. I don't know that I would have. I don't know that I, you know, I was not in the greatest of shape. A day later, I was fine, maybe perfect, but I was fine. But a couple of days later, and now I'm, I'm, I'm free. I'm, you know, I, I feel perfect. I have no, I'm not taking anything, you know, I'm off any regiment that they gave me, but it was primarily this one drug. And we're sending that and the Eli Lilly version of it, which is very similar. We're sending that to all of our hospitals. We're going to get people better. We got to get it there fast. That's why I'm doing an emergency use authorization. I got to get them to approve it really fast. But I gave them my numbers to put in with the other numbers that they already have, which are very good. Excellent. And uh, it's, uh, you know, it's the most amazing thing. And it's not remdesivir. Maybe that helps a little bit, but remdesivir is from not the same thing. This is stuff that is so good. It just wiped out the virus. It wiped it out. It's well, I'll tell you, we're so thing. happy Such that you. Such a big story to me. It was scary when we heard that uh, that you had tested positive, uh, given your demographics. Um, right. You know, you were right there in the in the number one target area um, for people that have trouble with this, and it's so you sound you sound great. I've been I've been great. reading that you got a hacking cough and that your voice is no, hoarse and good. you can't. You sound perfectly normal to me. Well, there's always that little, uh, you know, that little lingering thing for a couple of days. But no, I have, I have a, a my voice is now perfect. I mean, for a couple of days, you know, you have it's called the lingering thing. If you have a, if you have hay fever, if you have something, you have that too, a little bit. But uh, no, it's this is the most amazing thing that's happened. And I was asking the doctors today, 11, 11 guys, great people, you know, the heads of the biggest hospitals. It's amazing. I guess the president has a lot of power, but everybody shows up. What do you do? I'm the head of Johns Hopkins or I'm the head of stuff. You know, it's always like, but they're very brilliant people. And I said, how bad was I? They said, you could have been very bad. You were going into a very bad phase. And so it wasn't like it was just going to like with with the kids where you, they get it and they get sniffles and they're better two days later. Right. This looks like it was going to be a big deal. And and you know what that means, right? That means bad because I've lost five people, at least five people that were friends of mine. One in particular, like an incredible guy who went in there, went into the hospital. He was dead within three days. And and I'm just saying that we have something that will cure this now and a cure. And without us, without Trump administration, this would never have happened. We poured money into these secures and, and we poured money into the vaccines. And the vaccines are coming along great, Rush. I mean, the vaccines, Johnson & Johnson, Moderna, Pfizer, they're all coming along great. A little bit political. You know, they're afraid it's going to go too fast and I'll get credit for it before the election. Well, that's another thing I wanted to... You know, Mr. President, you, uh, you have been forced because of media coverage, to tout your own successes. You have been forced right. to tell, like you just did in the past five minutes here. And it it rubs some people the wrong way. They think you're bragging. They think that you're right. insecure, that you need to yeah. constantly. Would you explain to people why you find it necessary to tout your successes rather than let uh, somebody in the White House or a PR-type uh, operation do it for you? Why do you find it necessary to do it yourself? Well, first of all, it's such a great question, and most people can't understand it. Uh, as an example, I was nominated for two Nobel Peace Prizes. Three. For, three now. Three now. Some guy from Italy is, is nominated. Uh, you. Oh, that's good. Well, it won't be written about. When Obama got it, it was the biggest story I remember very well. He didn't even know why he got it. Got it almost and he got his on the come. He got his right. on the come. He hadn't even done anything yet. That's right. They, he didn't know. He couldn't explain why he got it, but I can and uh, one is Middle East peace without any blood, okay? And, and by the way, countries are lining up. The other is, uh, if you look at Kosovo and Serbia, they've been killing each other forever. 
and I got them to be peace and, you know, good stuff. And then I, I, I just heard about the third. Nobody even – it wasn't even on the news, okay? It, it, you know, I joke about it in speeches sometimes. I'll joke about it. I say, I tell my wife, let's watch tonight. It'll be a wonderful night. And they don't, they don't even cover it. They don't cover any good stuff with me. Anything that's good, they don't cover. Anything that's okay or, or, or bad, I mean, they're bad, they make it sound like, you know, like let's do the electric chair thing. But it is the most dishonest the, – the media are the most dishonest people I've ever met. And that's why I go back to the original. I, I just don't know why. I mean, they can't hate somebody so much, but I guess they do. But they do it with Republican conservatives. I mean, you've had it before I came along. And but never to the, I don't think never to this extent. You know, they say that Newt Gingrich, they said that uh, the one that got worse than me was Abraham Lincoln. I said, I disagree. They say Abraham Lincoln right. was just decimated by the press. I said, maybe he was, but it, it couldn't be worse. If I do something good, they make it look bad. If I do something OK, they make it look like horrible, horrible. And the reason I talk and I, I say it, you might as well talk about it yourself because nobody else will. Uh, if I give it to our very good people, Kaylee, and, you know, we have a lot of good people at the White House. If I give it to them to go out, they won't even – they won't report it. And did you ever see the way the press, the hostility of the press, the way they scream at these very nice people? They'll make just an ordinary statement, and they'll start screaming uh, like a bunch of maniacs, the, the media. Well, there are the reasons House, for it's it. just Let, incredible. Let well, me tell you one of the reasons. that it's They are sick. You know, it's crazy. Go ahead. Well, they, they are, they're, they're, you know, in a way they are. I think they have been poisoned to an extent. And I mean this, uh, folks, poisoned by their, their own hatred. Here's, th this is not the original reason, but we're into four years now that they have tried everything they know to get rid of you. And not a mm -hmm. single thing, not a single weapon has worked. These people, if they want to, Mr. President, and Newt's an example. They're able to take out Sarah Palin's another. They're able to take out and destroy any Republican they choose. It yeah. took them seven years to finally ruin George W. Bush and right. his reputation of the war in Iraq. But they did it. They got his approval numbers now to the 30s. You right. in Zogby today are still at 51. They haven't landed a dent, sir. They yeah. have not taken you off of your agenda. They've not. They've, they've maybe distracted you for now and then. But they haven't stopped it. They can't believe it. They're throwing everything. And so they are doubling down on doing whatever they can to try to get rid of you, just to prove that they can. And it's frustrating as heck that they haven't been able to. It's an amazing thing. And I'm like you. I watch this coverage and I, I ask me how many of the American people realize without being told how basically dishonest and unfair this all is, and you, and you 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 hope that a majority of Americans see it for what it is and react accordingly. But I tell you, it, it's it, it's that, and the fact that you're an outsider. They never thought you were going to win. They didn't even think you wanted to win. They thought you were engaged in a yeah. PR stunt in the first place, yeah, which is and false. Then you're also implementing policies, sir, that they detest. Your agenda is a small government. Well, it was before the pandemic hit. Your, your agenda is basically uh, pro-freedom, pro-liberty, pro-the American citizen first. You want to make America, can you believe make America great against controversial? Mm -hmm. Who yes. in the world <laughs> could find a problem with that? These sick people have found a way make America great again is reason to destroy you. It doesn't make any sense. Well, Rush, remember how big the wall was. Everything was the wall, the wall, the wall, and it got bigger and bigger because they figured there was no way to get it financed because it's a massive, you know, it's thousands of months. The whole thing is, it's a massive project. It's one of the biggest, it's actually one of the biggest uh, projects, government projects ever. Anyway, so we're building the wall. We're up to 380 miles of wall. Had a huge impact. Nobody gets through this wall. This wall is everything the Border Patrol wanted. I built it exactly. I didn't even agree with them on certain parts of it, but I think they were right. They had to have see-through. They had to have this. They had to have that. They have. It's lined up with all sorts of wires and everything you can imagine. It is the best. Okay, it's the it's the best, and it's had an impact that you wouldn't believe, and. Nobody thought I was going to get it done. Now it's almost completed. It'll be completed toward the end of the year, very soon. And it'll be about 535 miles. We may even extend it beyond that. But, you know, you have a lot of natural barriers, uh, rivers and, and mountains and other things that really do a pretty good job. But we, we're going to have it finished very soon. You don't even hear about it anymore. 
And you don't hear about how great the border numbers are. You know, people today, I ended catch and release, which was not easy because I had to go through the Democrats. But I ended, you know, you used to catch somebody and they'd release them into our country. And they'd come back four years later, but nobody would ever come back for a court case. It was the craziest thing. You'd catch somebody, even a murderer, and then you'd release them into our country. And then you'd say, you have to be back here in two and a half years to go to trial. And nobody would come back. Only the very dumbest would come back, okay? And that was about 1%. <laughs> yeah. No, that was about 1%. <clears throat> And it was crazy. Catch and release. I mean, you know, there were many programs like that. We got rid of most of them. And it was not easy to get rid of them. You know, you had to go through all sorts of hoops. But I got rid of catch and release. We have a very good border now. Now only people that come in legally are, are coming in. You know, we have a – well, the wall made a tremendous difference. But you notice you never hear about the wall anymore. Well, we not only that. It. Not only there have been two debates, sir. And in both those debates, your first and the vice presidential debate – there have been two areas that have never been explored, not one question asked about one's gun control, the Second Amendment, the right. other is immigration. Right. And, that's, and that's, that's uh, those are two strong areas of yours where the American people are with you by a massive majority right. support number. So they they're not even being brought up. They don't talk about immigration. We have immigration down really good. In fact, I was going to do an immigration bill. I have it all done. And then my guy said... Why bring it up, sir? You have the same policies that you're already implementing, and you've, you've, you know, why should you go through the controversy of it? I mean, we have a, a great the, – the people that wanted the wall generally love what I've done. I mean, because what we've done and immigration generally. We've got a couple hardliners out there, you know, friends of yours. But, but the people that wanted the wall, I've done far more than I thought – our immigration now, because it, it wasn't just it was the wall, but we had to cut a lot of these crazy things out. I mean, you have chain migration where somebody comes in illegally. We have we have a killer who killed eight people on the West Side Highway, ran over eight people, a, a, you know, a terrorist, jihadist, came in through the southern border. And through chain migration, the chain, he brings in his mother, his father, his grandmother, his aunts, his brothers, his uncles. He brings in all these people. And I say, wait a minute. And, and what we've done is incredible on immigration. You know, think of it. You have killers that come in and because of chain migration, they're allowed to bring other people. Right. Into the That's why they're not asking right. you about this. And they don't want to talk to me about it. Uh, you know, so many things like sanctuary cities. You know, the people in California hate sanctuary cities. I don't know where it gets its political stamina because. The people in California, they see me all the time. I think we'll do well in California. I mean, you know, in theory, you don't win California because everybody likes to vote three times, okay, if you want to know the truth. I don't know if you ever saw the list. Well, we're going to get I mean, into that later in the oh, program. No, the whole thing is crazy. But the, the people, they want to vote. They vote numerous times, numerous times, and it's disgraceful. But the people in California, they don't like sanctuary cities. What are you doing with the sanctuary cities? You're protecting criminals. Who wants that? And I've had so many people, I, liberal friends of mine from California, we'd love to get rid of sanctuary cities. Where that thug from, uh, as you know, Kate's Law, remember Kate's Law? Which yes. should have been, you know, we tried like hell to get it passed, but we had the, you know, we, we left the filibuster, okay? We should have, you know, gotten rid of the filibuster only because I said, Schumer's going to do it. I told Mitch, I said, Mitch, I get along great with Mitch. We had the greatest success in history on judges. We'll be up to 300 judges and two Supreme Court judges, and now three. Hopefully that'll go quickly. I think she's going to go very quickly. So I have three Supreme Court judges, but in the first term. That's never happened before. But I said, the problem is, Mitch, as soon as the Democrats do get in, you know, at some point, I guess they get in, they will blow up the filibuster. They'll, they'll go nuclear, as you know, and that'll be the end of the filibuster, and they'll approve stuff left and, you know, left and right, 50 percent. They'll go left and right. And that's the problem I had with it. It's not that... They're not right. They did it the right way. Harry Reid, we got lucky because Harry Reid thought that Hillary was going to win, and she knocked out the he well, knocked out the filibuster for the judges. Otherwise, they, I wouldn't have three hundred judges. I'd have two judges. They all thought Hillary was going to win, and that's another reason why you remain so despised and hated. And you know, it's yeah. not it's not you per se. I mean, some of it is. It's just the fact that you came along and totally upended their grand plans for globalism, uh, changing the way our nation's affairs are run and organized. You really just upset the apple cart in ways they never dreamed possible. They thought the Hillary administration was going to be Obama's third term. 
and you've just totally thrown them upside down. Now, this leads me to another thing. I go back and I compare the 2016 campaign. And at that point, you don't have a record. You are running for president, right. but you don't have a record. And you're having so much fun out there. Every You can tell every rally, every appearance, every press encounter you have is, is just loads of fun. Now, you got three and a half years in, almost four. You've got a record that just infuriates uh, the Democrats and the media, which are one and the same. And... Is it as much fun for you now? Is it the, the, the whole idea of campaigning? Because now the frustration, I can hear the frustration. You have a great record. Your sense of yeah. achievement and accomplishment is is incredible. And you have to be the one to tout it. And it's got to be frustrating for you. So it's such an interesting question because I have done more. You know, we have a list of things that we've done. Just go down the list. Even Space Force, that's a big deal. You know, first in 75 years, right? A new branch of the United States military. That by itself is an achievement that you could just do that, and you've had a successful thing. Space Force, It's uh, think of it. You know, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard. We have Space Force, and that's a big deal, and it's going to be very important, especially as the future, you know, as it goes, maybe the most important. But so many things I've done, and... You don't. It, it's it's incredible. People, uh, you you have to sell it yourself because they don't want to talk about. You don't hear anything about space force. You know how big a deal that is. You don't hear about any of this stuff. They don't want to talk about it. But I'll tell you the amazing thing. The one thing I I really have learned: the people of our country are smarter than the people that cover them, because they get it. How can I? be in a position where I'm leading in a lot of states. I mean, don't believe these fake polls. These fake polls, I, I don't know if you have a look at them. I don't even know why they have to put it down. I think there's a legal reason. But they put down where they interviewed 18 percent more Democrats than Republicans. Trump is losing by five. Do you understand what I mean? Absolutely. I, mean, I see these they, all the time. They, they, I, don't, I still don't know why. You know, they, I think there's a legal reason because they always say who they interviewed. But when you look down at what they call the tabs, it said uh, one of them said, 18 percent more Democrats. Another one said 14 percent. Well, let's assume the Democrats are going to vote for, you know, Sleepy Joe, and which is ridiculous because Joe shouldn't be a candidate. Joe should. Joe's in no condition to be a candidate. Well, we you know, say it nicely or we can say it badly. The 25th Amendment that crazy Nancy's playing around. She's gone crazy. She's a nut job. But this this uh, 25th Amendment. I think they put it in so they can get Kamala in replace. Exactly. Biden. That's exactly what it is. It's a trial run to see if they can kick Biden out of it. That's exactly right, sir. It's exactly. It's I not think. aimed at you. That was the first thing I thought of. And by the way, the Republicans are, have been really very good to me. One thing the Republicans have to do, though, they have to get tougher. We have some great ones. You know that. Jim Jordan and Meadows has been great. A lot of them, a lot of them have been great. But, but the Republicans have to get tougher. The, the Democrats play a much dirtier game. They don't, you know, like like impeaching on a phone call. I'll never forget, sir, did you call the president of Ukraine? Yeah, I did. Why? Just to congratulate. I had five guys begging me to call him to congratulate. I never met him before. You know, what do I care? Right. So they said, did you call the president? Yes. Well, uh, what did you say? I said, I don't know, a couple of months ago. I called him to congratulate him because he became president. Of Korea. Why? What's the word? Sir, they want to impeach you for that call. I said, impeach me for the call. <laughs> impeach me for something, but you can't impeach me. What did I do? I said, congratulations. It's, it's unbelievable. You know, by the way, when they found out, they believed the shift version of the call, which he made up standing in front of Congress. Okay? I saw Schiff that. Schiff is a real crook. He made it up. You know, he said eight times quid pro quo. Think of what eight times is. That would mean eight times you've asked for something illegal on a call, right? Think of what that means. The person on the other side of the call, if you, if you did it once, maybe, twice, maybe, if you did it eight times, they think you're certifiably insane, right? So Schiff made up the call, and I said, well, there's nothing wrong with the call. We actually took the call because we had the transcript. Fortunately, if we didn't have a transcript, I don't know, it would have been my word against a lot of a lot of these uh, crooked people. But if we I actually sent it to the Department of Justice to some division and they called up, they said to my people, uh, OK, so what are we looking for here? <laughs> In other words, you know, these are guys that look at drug deals and murders and, and they're going like, OK, 
explain to us what are we supposed to in other words after having read the call they're saying what the hell is wrong with this thing right they impeached me uh so you have to be they they are meaner and they are but they're bad policy open borders Sanctuary cities, high taxes. Let me try to simplify this. You know, I, I, one of the things I've tried to do, learned to do over the course of the years is to make the complex understandable. I think this election, sir, is really simple to explain, to, particularly people who are um, undecided. And I don't know how many of those there are. I frankly don't know how you can't be decided <laughs> by them. But it, this, this election is, is really, it boils down to two propositions. One is... It's between a man, you, who believes America is good and decent and great right. against and great people, potential. against people who are behind Joe Biden, who think America isn't good. They think America is unjust and immoral from the days of our founding, and they are trying to undermine and transform this country as founded. And that's why you are undermined, and that's why your successes are hidden, that's why your successes are distorted and lied about. It's no more complicated than that. If Folks, if you love this country, if you love America, the America you think exists, you don't have a choice in this election. Your only choice is President Trump. If you don't support President Trump here, you are going to end up facilitating the transformation of America into a country it was never intended to be. You're going to have $13 a gallon gasoline with the Green New Deal. You're going to have so much disruption in your life that you can't possibly imagine. And don't doubt me, they're not going to be honest with you about this. But that's really what this is about. You are good. You believe America is good. You believe America is great. You want to keep it that way and you want to solidify it. And you want America's greatness to be enshrined and empowered for decades beyond you. And America has great potential, too. Because any shortcomings, we can solve those shortcomings, but they're going to make them much shorter. I mean, America has tremendous potential. When you look at what we've done with energy, and they want to take that advantage away and give it to these other countries that are going to always have energy. When you look at the environment, I'm very important. I, I love the environment. The environment. I want clean air. I want clean water. I want, you know. And by You the shouldn't way, even climate, have to say that. that is, you shouldn't have to say everybody yeah. wants clean water. The fact that they're out there claiming you want dirty water and dirty... You you oh, shouldn't even have to say you like clean water. Yeah, That's it's outrageous. Like the forest fires in California. If we had forest management, you wouldn't have any forest fires. You know, in Europe, you go there, they live, they have forest nations. They call them Austria, different places. They don't have the woods burning down, and their trees are more explosive than ours, meaning explosive from potential fire. They have trees, and they have... You know, they maintain their forests and they put cuts in between. So if they have a fire, it doesn't burn down a half a million acres. They they do it properly. Our people don't do that. And then we talk about, you know, they want our air clean, but they don't talk about China, Russia, India, these other countries where the pollution is massive going up. So we have a clean spot on a massive planet. We have a clean spot, which is a small percentage of the of the planet. A very small percentage of the planet, and then China is spewing crap, and and Russia, and and all of these other India, and did you ever see what they dump into the ocean that floats into California? Yeah, that's like exactly unbelievable. Exactly and, right, folks. And we end up cleaning it up, and then they say, well, you know, the environment, the environment. It's I could tell you, I could tell you hundreds, hundreds of stories. You know, a lot of what you and I talk about is really based on common sense. You know, it's people say, are you a conservative? I say, no, I'm, I'm common sense. based on common sense and love, love and of love. and yeah. for country and people. Yeah, that's true. It's very true. Now, I got to get to some questions. We've been, you know, and i tell you something, sir. When we went through the questions and we, literally, I'm telling you, I've never had a response like you generated right. when no, your appearance good. was announced. It's the most amazing thing, sir. Well, I and think you know you're going to see that. You Rush, know what? I, I I think you're going to see that come November third, and and a little before that, because our people don't want to send in these fake ballots that are being fraudulent, well, fraudulently made all over the place. We're going to get know, into that, but you know what? Uh, yeah, probably one of the most it. mentioned topics in the questions was health care. People are scared. Let me give right. you a sample question, dear President Trump. This is a woman in Massachusetts named Kathy. I'm glad that you and the First Lady are recovering from COVID. So happy you are our president. Thank you for all you do to defend us. 
My question's about health care and pre-existing conditions. It's very right. important to me and a lot of Americans. I believe you said pre-existing conditions will be covered in your health care plan. But please, right. could you explain this a little more? Because there are a lot of I people will. saying that you're not going to cover pre-existing conditions. And uh, we, you need to get your message out uh, since this. The, the Democrats are trying to malign you on this. And we need to know pre-existing conditions are a big deal. Does your plan cover them? So the Democrats are vicious and they lie. And what they do is, as an example, health care and other things, they have me standing at a grave of a beautiful soldier in an old cemetery, magnificent cemetery. And nobody respects soldiers more than I do, especially whether you're talking about uh, live soldiers or soldiers that gave their lives. And they have a source say, these are suckers and losers. This was for a magazine that's third rate, you know, super liberal Obama magazine. And it's a quote. They took that quote from one source. I have 25 people that verbally that, you know, on the record said that was never said. Who would ever say that? Only an animal would say that. I don't know. If, I know some very bad people. Nobody do I know that would say a thing like that. They put it in ads. They make it like I said it. I never said just the opposite. I've taken care of the military better than anybody. They do the same thing with health care. They will make up a statement that's so bad. Now, pre-existing conditions, I'm totally for it, but I'm against Obamacare because Obamacare is too expensive. I already got rid of the individual mandate, which was the worst part of Obamacare. That's where you had to pay a fortune for the privilege of not paying for bad health insurance. You understand that? Yes, right? sir. So I got rid of it. That was, And I got rid of it through the law. I got rid of it in our tax decrease. The we got a tax, the biggest tax decrease, decrease in the history of our country. We would have never been able to build up the economy if we didn't get that. But one of the things I got in there, I got rid of the individual mandate. And what I want to do is, and we're fighting to terminate, it's sort of I have terminated Obamacare, because once you get rid of the individual mandate, it's no longer Obamacare. But I had a choice to make, Rush. It was a big choice. Do I maintain Obamacare, the remnants of Obamacare after the the you know the mandate do i maintain it well or do i run it badly i could have done it either way i have very good people over there alex azar and uh, sema the whole group i said you know what we got to run it as well as it can be run i have no choice i could have run it really badly and made everybody angry but i didn't do that i ran it really well knowing that it's run really well it's still no good you know it's still not good uh, it's much better than when they ran it. They couldn't even do – remember, they spent $50 million or $5 billion on the server, if you remember. They couldn't get the server right. I, oh, I do remember. They, I do remember. Do but there still time. is this confusion about pre-existing conditions out there. And oh, it's, yeah. yeah. You know, so it's, a, happens, it's a frustrating thing because it's, it's not even the correct – title for it, what the plan does but that's what people correct. think and so that, that's correct. how you have to deal with it it's correct but what i what they do is they love to say that i'm going to get rid of pre-existing conditions no i want to terminate obamacare and then come up with a great and we have it come up with a great health care plan that's much less expensive and does include people with pre-existing conditions that's what i want to do now they'll also say about social security well, you need a republican senate for that and you need a republican house that's for right that. in order to do that in order well what will happen is if we win the democrats will do something to help get health care i mean they're going to come along because they have no choice they're going to come along they, they have no choice i will say one thing you know we talk about unity because i'd like to see the country come together it's not as easy as people think but just prior to the plague coming in from china when the plague came in from china People were calling. We had the lowest unemployment we've ever had. We had the best employment, and we were up to 160 million people employed. We never were even close. Everybody had a job. Everybody you had the happy. lowest African-American unemployment Ever. in history since That's records right. have been kept. That's right, Rush. So we had the best numbers ever. We had the highest stock market, although I tell you, we're, we're inches away right now for people's 401ks. If they held on to their stocks, they're very— they're very wealthy right now, and our economy is doing really amazing. I mean, considering that we're in the you know this pandemic thing sent to us by China, but if you look at what we've done, and people were calling me, Rush, in terms of bringing our country together, that I really had never heard from before. In other words, they were not interested, and they were saying like, let's start getting together. It was coming together. Success 
was bringing our country together. And then we got hit by the China plague. But success, Rush, even you might be surprised to hear that people that you would have said no way were calling and saying, can we get together? And it was coming together because success and I've always said success will bring us together. Our military is strong. When I took over, we had no ammunition. We had a case where a general, a certain general, highly overrated general, told me we have no ammunition. And I said, what are you talking about? I say, no president should ever be told that again. Now we have so much. I heard you say that. I was frankly surprised that we were low on ammo. I mean, I don't think I've ever heard that. We had, he said, sir, we have no ammunition. Okay. And I said, keep that very quiet. And then we started building up. And now we have new rockets, new missiles. We have stuff the likes of which nobody, Russia dreams of the stuff that we have. China dreams of the stuff that we have. Rush, and we can't talk about it, and we shouldn't talk about it. We have things that, and hope to God we never have to use it. Our nuclear is all tippy-top now, uh, and you don't want to even say it. You know, we have no choice but to say it. We were so far behind. They, oh, if you look, I call them oh, Biden. Obama and Biden, what they did to our military was it just was horrible and economy i mean they were telling everybody that we need to adapt our expectations to a new era of decline that's right no manufacturing uh, america's best days are behind this i mean it was outrageous and you know gdp one and a half percent max every year right, right. no we were we were but it was coming together rush and i'm telling you and you you would be a skeptic maybe almost more than no, i know it was coming People together i am a skeptic together for the I, first time for the first time, I am a skeptic on this. Believe me, more than you know. <laughs> I think so. That's true. I got another That's question true. for you, Mr. Right. President. This is Mary in Missouri. This is our second most mentioned topic that people want to hear you address. Mr. President, yeah. drives me crazy that the Democrats can call all of us out here racist and sexist just because we don't agree with them. It's the easiest thing in the world to call somebody racist because nobody wants to be racist or anti-anything, and we aren't racist. Why do Democrats get away with it, sir? And how do Republicans say enough is enough? We are tired of being called evil racist when all we want is for all Americans to be free, to have the blessed right. opportunity this Constitution and country offers everybody. We want a healthy and safe future, and we love everybody. How do we deal with this, sir? How do we finally shut this down? What would you so tell her? I've, I've watched this for a long time. I've had it. I've probably been a victim of it, uh, you and I and a couple of others more than anybody, and, uh, and we're just the opposite. Uh, when they give up, when we're beating them, they have nothing else to fall back on but the word racist. And that's always that means that uh, when you're winning and you're just knocking the hell out of them, they have nothing else to say. They call you a racist. And this has been going on for decades. Uh, I don't know that you're going to stop it, but people are wise to it and people are rolling their eyes now. They're rolling their eyes. Uh, it is just an incredible thing. The way they use the the race word, the racist word is just is actually disgusting. I was asked by Chris Wallace, who's third rate. I was asked by him. He was protecting Biden the other night. It was pathetic. I couldn't even ask him, why did you get three and a half million dollars from the mayor of the mayor's wife of Moscow? Right. Why did you say a billion dollars unless you get rid of the prosecutor and then you give him the billion dollars? And Chris Wallace was and he was choking like a dog. He wasn't able to answer. And Chris Wallace would go in and save him every time. That whole thing was disgraceful. Well, you whenever, know what we're going to do today? You you know, we're going to we're going to give you a chance to actually respond to Joe Biden, because you're right. The moderators of these debates are never asking Biden to explain himself. No. What did you mean by that, sir? They're not asking you to explain Biden. They're asking you to explain you. So I have some Joe Biden sound bites here anywhere from 13 to 17 seconds that okay. no moderator will ever ask you to respond to. And as such, the American people don't know that he has said these things. Oh, yeah. Let's tr let's let's try one. OK, um, go. go. This this is from December 30th, 2019. Uh, and he's in Derry, New Hampshire, telling coal miners to forget coal mining and learn how to Absolutely. code. Anybody who could go down 300 to 3,000 feet in the mine sure and hell can learn how to program as well. Give me a break. Anybody who can throw coal into a furnace can learn how to program, for God's sake. There he's putting down coal miners. You never get asked about it. You never hear these sound bites anywhere in the media. What do you think of that? 
Well, I think it's terrible. And you could look at so many other things. Look at fracking. He went for a whole year saying, no way there'll be fracking. Mark my words, there will not be fracking. And so did uh, Kamala. You know, Kamala, she's another great one. Uh, and they talk about fracking. She shouldn't listen to Willie Brown. Willie Brown told her not to accept this job, and she did it anyway. She... Uh, I thought she was so. Mike beat her so badly the other night, but she, she's just not good at what she did. Hey, don't forget, she started off. She went. She only went down in the polls. That's usually not the person you want to pick to run for vice president. Anyway, but the both of them, they talk about fracking like it was the greatest sin on earth. Then they get the nomination, and now they're talking about they want to do fracking. But, you know, I find in politics, always fo always follow their first words, because that's where they're going. They have no choice. They agreed with Bernie Sanders and all the people on the manifesto. And if you read that manifesto, that manifesto is further left than Bernie Sanders, much further left than Bernie Sanders. You know, usually you think they take him right. Bernie took him left. He took him left of where he was. But uh, if you look at the fracking, the call, you could say the call. Remember Hillary, uh, three weeks before she went to West Virginia, she was knocking the hell out of coal. And then she forgot she had to go to West Virginia. So she goes to West Virginia and she sat at the table with the miners. And uh, it was just the end of her when she knocked it. Well, you know what? I think and it what would they be... do with coal now with clean coal is amazing. You know, we have we have more than anybody. Yep. But what they do with clean coal is amazing. We have more energy than anybody. And these other countries want to take it away with the Paris Accord and all of this. They want to take away our wealth. They want to take away our jobs, our companies. It is disgraceful. You know, explain fracking to people, sir, because it's a term that's thrown out there. And uh, I know what it is. I can explain it. A lot of people can, but a lot of people don't know what it is and why it's so outrageous that they will not commit and they will not get their story straight on whether or not they're going to ban it. What is it? Well, basically, it's getting energy out of the ground really efficiently and getting every drop of it. And it's it's created wealth for our country like you wouldn't believe. And it's it's really been over the last small number of years that that's really become, you know, you used to see these massive oil wells and, you know. You can basically go in and drill sideways in the they shale. Sideways, they can drill up and down and around. It's unbelievable. If you ever watch this process and they just suck the stuff out of the ground that that is.